Well, we've got a bit of a mess here at the moment, um, but um, I've made quite a lot of progress. This is the head, obviously, uh, which is all ready to go back on to the car. Uh, new valve springs uh, I've put on there, um, and I used these little um, valve sea oil seals um, in instead of the original ones, which I think might work a little bit better. So hopefully they they're like a little umbrella thing, and they um, will perhaps stop a little little bit of the oil burning. Um, I've been working on the SU carburetors and just got some rebuild kits for those. The um, dynamo and the uh, starter motor are the original ones. The car was made in uh, on the 11th of February 1959 and these starter motors and generators both dated uh, January 59 so I really wanted to keep them. Uh, the dynamo, the, um, dynamo uh, armature has gone to ground so I'm having that rewound. Um, and I've got all new brushes and bearings and everything else. The starter motor worked before I took it off the car, so I'm just going to have the commutator machined, place all the bearings and the brushes, and hopefully keep the original ones because they are the original ones that came with the car, which for me is um, something that's really quite important. Uh, and over here now, the main block is back into the car with the head gasket on, and I'm just about to drop the head on that so I'm really hoping this is the last time I'm going to see those pistons for quite a long time. I've got a little bit of touching up to do um, from putting the engine in. I put it in by myself with the help of a crane of course and it actually wasn't that hard to do. Just um, patience and uh, lots of measuring and just going slowly and it uh, it went in okay so uh, uh, everything lined up. Um, I sorted out the engine mount problem and um, yeah, that's uh, coming along nicely. Uh, this is the underside of the head, which has been machined. Uh, I've had new valve guides fitted into this head as well. Uh, and the, the uh, machinist who did the work for me said that he had to take about 20 thou off this to get it nice and flat. So um, there was obviously quite a little bit of bowing in, in the head, um, and it should be really good now, and I guess that will also raise the compression level a little bit as well. Well, it's um, just after Christmas here and um, in Australia, and uh, while I know some of you over the pond have been suffering at the hands of the um, polar vortex, as we've heard it called, uh, it has been very, very hot here for the week, last week. Um, today is Friday, and from Monday it's been over 40 degrees Celsius here, um, 40, up to 45 degrees, and a little windy, and the bushfires could be a bit of a worry. Um, so it's been very hot out here in the shed and I haven't had a chance to do a lot but I've got out here when I can and um, made some progress on the engine. Um, the first thing is uh, the SU carburetors here I've rebuilt. Um, the the um, butterflies were a bit worn um, and these uh, pieces here um, and I got some rebuild kits from the UK and completely put them through. I didn't have to ream at the shafts. Um, I just put new shafts in because really it was just the shafts that were worn uh, and they've made a, a big difference and these being HD6s have little seals um, in the end here uh, which are originally cork and they seal off the shaft so that if there is any linkage, uh, a leakage um, it stops or cuts down a bit on the air that might be drawn into the cylinders by accident. Um, the ones that came with the kit were little rubber pieces which I really didn't have a lot of faith in so I made some um, new cork ones uh, to replace the old cork ones which had fallen to pieces so we'll see how we go with those. I kept the rubber pieces just in case I need them. I polished up uh, the tops of the um, SUs here. They've had new jets, new needles, uh, as I say new shaft, everything that needed doing in them. They're, they're in very good condition. I don't necessarily like polished tops on them because they weren't polished originally but um, they actually they do look quite nice I must say um, and they clean up quite well. You have to be careful doing it of course um, in case you damage them. One little uh, point of interest here is that uh, these are vented carburetors, internally vented carburetors which means that there is a, a small channel um, drilled through this section here into the main body of the carburetor which means that the 
caps shouldn't have holes in them. If it hasn't got this vented section here, or dust free as they call them, then the caps will have holes drilled in the tops. Um, you can't have both and if you've got uh, these were interesting because one of them had this one here had a hole in the top and it was vented so the carburetor wouldn't have worked very well and there was quite a lot of evidence that things like the float height had been played with and, and various bits and pieces there which led me to believe that um, it hadn't been performing well and somebody had tinkered with it over the years to try and get it to work properly I what I did was um, you can't see it because it, it's pretty well invisible now is I let in a small piece of brass into the hole that was there and soldered it from the back and then polished up the caps so that they're both now um, dust free carburetors in other words they have the internal hole drilled through there into the suction chamber but they don't have the hole in the cap and that's really quite important um, the other thing is I painted the manifold uh, I know there is a couple of schools of thought on that one. I've seen lots of pictures with them painted and lots without. The casting really requires quite a lot of work to bring it up to any sort of high standard even though it's aluminium. And there were vague evidences of little bits of Healy green paint on there so I decided that um, I would paint that. I've rebuilt the uh, generator and the starter motor which is right down there in the bowels and you can't see it very well but they're both the original pieces that came with the car I think I made that that point um, earlier on the car is built on the 11th of February 1959 and both of these pieces um, are made in either late January 59 or December 58 so it's really for me it's quite important to keep those original pieces with the car the armature was burnt out on the dynamo so I got the armature rewound, which really wasn't all that expensive. Um, I put new brushes, bushes and bearings in both the dynamo and the starter motor. Um, can't test the dynamo of course yet, but it motors. If I put a current into it, it motors, so I can only assume that that works well, or will work well. Um, and the starter motor likewise uh, works, So I think, but that worked before I took it off the car, so that's all hopefully going to be good. The um, Distributor uh, actually is the original cap which I've cleaned up. It appears to be okay, time will tell. I quite like using original stuff. And the distributor likewise was made in February 1959. This car even had the original coil on it which is dated um, January 59. So whether I'll keep that or not, I don't know. I might put it on and see how it goes and carry a spare with me in case of emergencies. Um, one little issue I had here, which is quite interesting, I, I haven't screwed this on, so I can just lift this off for a second. Um, I haven't set any of the rocker gear up yet, but one little issue which I had here, when I when I had the head planed, um, they had to take 20 thou off it to get it flat, which is you know quite a lot. When I put the rocker gear back on, I discovered that this head stud here, the top of this head stud, it's gone out of focus now, it's probably as close as I can get, the top of this head stud was fouling on this rocker arm to the point where it was really stiff and, and would hardly move um, and this had the same issue with the back one. Um, just as well I noticed it because if I hadn't and tried to set the tappets and got the engine running it you know, could have been a bit of a problem. So I thought about how I was going to cure this and I really didn't want to take the head off again all the studs had been put in as far as they would go so what I did was got a Dremel and just um, you can see where I've just cleaned up the top of the head here uh, top of the head of the, the stud rather the end of the stud just to take a little bit off it um, annoying uh, but I wouldn't have thought that 20 thou would have made any difference but clearly the clearance there is very tight so um, that was a problem that, that I had to deal with unfortunately noticed before I tried to run the engine. Um, everything else is, is pretty right. I think the rocker gear is good. As I say I put new valve um, springs, guides etc into it. Um, I was fitting in the um, accelerator linkages here and I broke the little plastic piece uh, which most people are familiar with um, which is you know replaceable but annoying because it was 
it was the original piece off the car. So um, that's the progress so far, and I think I think um, I'll be leaving this for a little while now. Um, I have a very understanding wife, but I have spent an enormous amount of time on this over the holidays. Um, and probably the next step is to start working on the bodywork, which which you know, is very time consuming, but because I'm doing the work myself, even though I'm an amateur restorer, I do that work myself, it won't cost me as much as this um, engine has, has done. So that's it. Um, the story so far.